What's up, everybody? Good morning. So I got a bunch of cool stuff here. Before I can move on to installing all this stuff, I need to attend to an issue here. That, to be exact. I do have to press out these ball joints and press in new ones, which are actually right here in this box right here. Hopefully it goes smoothly. I'm more concerned about getting it out than installing the new one. Seems like installing a new one is not that bad, but we'll see right now. So I'm gonna get the hammer real quick. I know you guys see coilovers here. I know I said I'd give you guys an update. Well, I got an update, so I'll tell you guys later in the video. I'm concerned hammering this end of the ball joint out. Um, I already messed up the brake shield, some of it, you know, when I was trying to get this part of the ball joint out from the LCA. Uh, and then I feel like since this end is not that stable, it's gonna, you know, the hammer's gonna be swinging everywhere. So in case that doesn't work, I'm not liking it. I do have uh, the ball joint installation removal kit on backup, on command. This is Maddox, Modox, not sure how to pronounce it correctly, but I do have it on standby just in case I'm not liking how the hammer's doing its job. So I am gonna use this for installation, removal, wasn't thinking about it, but I'll see. Before you spend about an hour trying to hammer this thing out, or if you you know press it out, most of these have a snap ring or some kind of ring. In this case, I don't think this one has a snap ring. Uh, it has like a little ring though. Um, if I just get the screwdriver underneath, you can kind of see this ring. So I said hell with it. I'm using the actual ball joint remover. I have the adapter here. You can use any side, I would assume. Um, and then I have the actual receiving cup. And then I have this garbage bower. You guys have seen me have success and failure with this impact. But I have the impact and I have a 22 mm because that's the size of the end of the jack screw here. And then I have the C-clamp here. The only problem that I'm facing is that this brake dust shield is in my way of actually putting the end of the ball joint straight so that I can push it out straight. Uh, so if you guys see here, if I have it straight, well, guess what? The adapter doesn't fit. So I have to tilt this up almost all the way for me to have any access. And that's a problem. So I think if I saw it move just a little, if I can get it to move a little more, I think I should have success with uh, hammering it out with the actual hammer. Did see some success, some of it moving. Hope you guys saw it too. All right, so taking off the cup here, you can see it moves. The actual adapter was sliding a little bit to the side, so a little, you know, a little scratch there, no biggie. Um, I think I should have success in hammering this thing out from here. I Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you guys that I didn't see any snap rings. That, that's really bad. This is just the actual ring for the boot right here for this boot. I'm pretty confident that from here, I'm able to uh, just hammer it out. too bad not too bad took out the ball joint out it wasn't as hard as i thought it'd be started off with the impact wrench utilizing the ball joint removal and installation kit and then i just finished it off with the hammer um it's basically how i did it went pretty smooth so you know it's pretty cool uh so yeah uh now i'm just gonna go ahead and clean this up the brake shield is i don't know man <clears throat> i think i have to take off the actual rotor to get the uh, that shield off usually it has like two three screws on the side but i don't see where these are at but whatever i'll just leave it on there hopefully the installation is just as smooth or smoother before i install the new one i'm just gonna go ahead and clean the inside of the actual housing where the ball joint goes with some acetone i wanted brake cleaner or a uh, carb cleaner but i don't have any with me so it's all good i think some acetone will do just fine just get it cleaned up a bit uh before we install the new one so that's good enough 
you know, I uh, cleaned the outside of this wheel bearing here just a bit. And now to get the ball joints, it's gonna be this box right here. Fresh. Let's see. Nice. Very, very nice. Got a little calcium nut right there. Ball joint, boot, that little ring that I was telling you guys about. And this one should have a snap ring inside there. I lied, it's here. Yeah, there we go. Boom, even the hard race stickers. So comparing these side by side, these are the OEM ones. These are hard race. Uh, the actual cylinder portion here, it's the same. Here, the boot would go here. You know, th this one I ripped it off with the little ring. The only difference that I see slightly is that the rod on this one, where, the, where it's threaded, is a little longer than this one, but that shouldn't be a problem though. Um, test fitting this one in here it fits very nice i'm not trying to push it through just yet i did buy some molly grease so i'm gonna go ahead and use that in the little housing of the ball joint gonna go ahead and get some here just apply it here just around should be enough so i went ahead and put some grease on there as well And that's about straight. So I have the ball joint there. So the same way that I got it out, I'm gonna also insert it the same way there. I'm gonna take off the castle nut. And then I'm not going to be using any of these adapters because these adapters run into clearance issues. So yes, this would fit nicely over here. But if you really look closely, it does not have the clearance to push it all the way through. And worse with this one, since this one's even bigger, this one would be the same thing, right? It adapts there, even worse for this one. So ideally you would put this thing like this and then followed by this one right here. But uh, I'm not sure with this kit, it doesn't have the proper clearances for civic ball joints, but no problem. I'll just be using the actual adapter or maybe the, the cover on the other side here to protect it. Or maybe even the cup here, this cup to protect it here on this side uh, and then just have this end right here sitting on the cylinder side and it'll push it in. Pretty much had this thing dialed in. I just used, this is called the receiving cup here. Um, the end of the jack screw goes in here, but it's blocked off though. So this is not actually going through, it's just blocked off. So that'll transfer the pressure to this top part and it'll uh, push this thing through. I need to line it up a little bit better. It's a little bit off right there, but as soon as you see me start pressing in with the impact, you'll see this thing, hopefully, it gets driven in. Let's go, baby! Oh man, that was cheeks, man. That was easy. Cheeks, bro, easy. Oh man, I'm so happy. This is what happens when you have the right tool. I'm telling you. The new one's perfectly installed there. Sitting flush. Nothing's damaged. I thought it was damaged, but it's just some grease. Uh, so all I need left right now is just the actual snap ring. Um, there's two grooves here. I believe it's gonna be the top one there. I'm not sure why it's two grooves. I would put it on the top one closest to the actual knuckle housing here. For installation, you're gonna wanna use this uh, installation cup, this one, number eight. At least that's what I think it's called. Yeah, install cup adapter. No need for this one. This is uh, an extra adapter. Um, literally this part of the end fits snug into this part of the install cup adapter. And yeah, just put this part, the cylindrical part here, boom. You should not be running into any clearance issues. And ciao, just like that. So literally the only other thing you need here is the actual snap ring and your cotter pins. So the snap ring here. So the snap ring is literally gonna go like around the first ring. I just saying that one right there. So literally just going to open it and then boom, place it there. Also, make sure you get yourself a set of snap ring pliers. Trust me, they will be the best investment that you will possibly get. 
even grab the snapping the with just the pliers. Still a pain in the ass to do. So I got it in. Just some advice using the snap ring pliers, you know, it has like that little bit that kind of sticks out. Well, because of that, I really wasn't able to fit it onto the last groove here, the one on top, uh, because the edge of these pliers was hitting. So I just said, screw it, let me put it in the middle one right here or the one below it, and boom. Still struggle with the snap ring pliers, but a lot better than if you're using. I don't know, needle like some skinny needle nose pliers or just two screwdrivers. Also, a screwdriver kind of help too. Uh, but yeah, once you get it in, it should be able to spin freely like that all around the groove with no issues. Yeah, and here it comes back around. So yeah, it's all sits, should be good. Uh, and then the cotter pin will obviously, that once I install the whole knuckle into the LCA, the cotter pin will go right through this little hole here at the bottom of the thread right there it'll go right through there so i'll leave the cotter pin for later but yeah it's literally that's it it's done fresh and also no play at all firm and this one still you know i mean it has play which is not good but still a lot more firm than what i've seen i've seen some that are just you know you drop it like that and just drops down vice versa so you know trash memorabilia i don't know we'll see other than that the new ball joint is pressed in hard race ball joint beautiful um yeah it's good to go boots on there just ready to get mounted onto the upper control arm by the tie rod and uh the lca right here and then the brake caliper right here Another thing that I wanted to bring to mind here is the wheel bearing located here. These do tend to go out on Hondas after a really long time. When they do go out, it's a pretty dangerous hazard. Uh, and when they're going out or they're battery rating their shot, they do have wiggle left and right. This one trying to wiggle it left and right and I'm not seeing any play at all. Um, it does tilt it's because it's not flat on the lug nuts. And I know when they're new, uh, they're very stiff. So this one does have play. Well, not play, but it does rotate pretty nicely. Uh, it's pretty free all around. So I think it's still good, but it's something to keep in mind uh, in the near future if these things do give out, which they will. But for now, I think we're good. Now the update, this and this. The axles, if you guys saw my last video, you guys saw that I picked these up right before picking up my girl before we were going to Irwindale. So this one here is a passenger axle. This is replacing for my old one, current one, right? Uh, so these are off of a D16 as well, single cam. Uh, so this is perfect, beautiful axle. It's all good right here. You got the ring here. You got the axle right here. Beautiful, smooth. So this is good to go. This is the driver's side axle. This one's also good. Boots are good, intact. Nothing's torn or ripped. Uh, the only con is that the homie told me that he didn't have the axle on it, so that's no biggie. I have to go to Honda anyways uh, for two bolts. And then meanwhile, I'm there, I'm gonna go ahead and get that axle out there for the driver one. So these are the axles, so these are ready to be replaced. Technically, I only needed this one, but screw it, I'll replace both of them. So two days ago, I got the coilover. So in my video with the suspension removal, I believe I had to mention to you guys that I would keep you guys updated as to what I was going to do. Because as you guys saw, the actual, I'm going to show you guys. So the actual coilover, it's bent to the left, right? You can see exactly where it's bent, it's right there. You can tell that it's coming down straight and then it goes like that. So it should be like that instead of like that. So this part right here, it's fucked. That being said, I wanted to buy an OEM shock and strut and spring from Honda, but guess what? They're discontinued. Like everything else, Honda has discontinued many parts. So that left me into getting either brand new coilovers or fine used ones. Well, the cheapest brand new coilover was uh from jhp usa i believe it was uh not godspeed um i'll get the brand for you guys i'll post a little screenshot of it but they were like 500 bucks there were some that were 400 bucks but you needed to use the oem top hats dangerous game you gotta get spring compressor and the spring can go flying out and you can get hurt and your car can get you know your fender can go flying out and go ballistic on you anyways i was gonna spend the 500 but then I was on Facebook Marketplace, you know, buying parts, you know, that you don't need and that you want, et cetera, et cetera. And I saw that the homie had these uh, 
max speeding rods coilovers for 250 bucks so i was like bro that's a cop let's go and yeah so dead ass that's what i really went to go buy uh these are the front ones this one and this one and then these are the two rear ones you have the spot to fit the bolt through here uh and man i mean this is a deal uh the guy said that he had less than 100 miles on them um i believe them you know they're a little bit dirty not sure what happened here looks like some paint got on there uh but they look good they look freaking good uh these are adjustable they even had the dampening right here all right you can change the dampening uh for the adjustment the only problem that i see that he said uh which he showed me too is that i believe it's this one this one doesn't have the actual washer and the bushing for the top hat so that's not good i will replace it with the actual bushing and the washer but if i'm that desperate and i'm kind of in a rush kind of not uh to get the car back up on its feet i can just replace this coilover alone the car might feel a little funny uh i would have to make sure that the ride height is the same on both the passenger and the driver's side but ideally the best thing to do is to install all four of these at the same time uh you know starting with the front rear doesn't matter but yeah so i got these for a steal 250 bucks for all four of them so hey man that was a steal for me so i'm happy with these these are these will do for now in the future i will go ahead and buy you know some tiny ones or buddy club buddy club is baller for sure or some other sets of coilovers uh i wasn't trying to spend you know too much or you know 600 800 bucks for you know you know kind of mid brand just to you know spend more money to get you know the brand that i really wanted so i figured these were the better option just you know because these i think these are decent so you know i paid you know a low amount of money you know kind of save myself some money in the long run hopefully they'll do good hopefully they won't blow up on me and you know that way you know in the future i can go ahead and get you know a top tier brand one so hey man i think it works out well so that's it for today's video guys uh it's just me removing and installing the new ball joints if you guys are fine step by step hopefully it was simple and informative if you guys are watching for entertainment well hopefully you guys enjoyed uh i do need to go to honda like i said i need to go buy a bolt for the lca if you guys remember the one of the bolts just literally shattered and literally you know broke inside the lca so i need to go buy that bolt and then the axle like i had just mentioned earlier and so yeah so next video should just be installing all the suspension stuff back and we'll be that much closer to getting the car back on the road so yeah guys stay tuned hope you guys enjoy the weekend stay safe and i'll see you guys next time all right guys peace out